In this lesson, we'll learn how to create these animations using only CSS. No JavaScript is used here, and the animations can be applied with custom properties. Some of my patrons requested this after receiving poor page speed scores from Webflow and GSAP interactions. JavaScript animations had to wait till the page structure fully renders before it can select and animate those elements. This can leave the top sections of our site empty for many seconds while waiting for the page below to render. With CSS, it can select and animate elements right away, and it can also help us clean up really heavy JavaScript files created by Webflow Interactions if we rely more on CSS. Here we have an animation that we named Slide Up. It animates anything from zero opacity and Y 100% to full opacity and Y 0%. We can apply these to any elements, like if I select this title under Custom Properties, I can set an animation name of Slide Up and we'll also need a duration. I'll set animation duration of 0.5 seconds. And we can apply the same animation to multiple elements. On the paragraph, I'll set the same animation name of slide up, and then we can set a different duration for our paragraph. So I'll set this duration to one second. What we should notice is the heading slides up and the paragraph's a bit slower. We can also pass an ease for this by setting an animation timing function and we'll go ahead and set the default as ease if we don't apply anything. We can set linear if we want no ease. We can set ease in if we want to only ease the start or ease out if we only want to ease the ending, which is what I'll do here. And we can also delay this if we'd like. I'll set an animation delay so the paragraph starts a bit late and we'll delay it by one second. Now, if we preview this, the, an the paragraph's visible, then the animation kicks in. We'll want the paragraph to be hidden by default, so we could try turning its opacity down. It makes the content hard to edit though, and when the animation's finished, the paragraph goes back to being hidden. And that's because CSS resets the animation back to its default once it's finished. So to fix that, we can set an animation fill mode, and we can go ahead and set that to forwards so that it retains the ending of the animation when it's over. If we play, now once it's finished, it stays in place. But we might also want to not have to set this opacity zero. We could set backwards if we want it to retain the beginning of the animation, or we could set both if we want it to retain the beginning and end. So with animation fill mode both, it's hidden, and once it finishes, it stays visible. On this heading here, we might set an animation sort of iteration count. And if we go ahead and set that to two, then it should play two times and then it stops. I'll go ahead and select this again. Let's change the duration to one second. And we can also set the iteration count to infinite. So it just plays infinite number of times. That'll just keep going. But we could also set an animation direction and we could set that to alternate. And by doing that, it should play forwards and backwards and that should just keep repeating. And we can also set an animation sort of play state. And if we set that to running, it'll just be playing by default. But then whenever we go to hover this, we can change the value to paused so that whenever we hover the text, it pauses the animation. Let's create a new animation called Scale Up that animates from zero opacity and 0.5 scale to full opacity and full scale. We can apply these animations to elements using utilities. If I create a class of Slide Up, that could have my animation name of Slide Up, a default duration of 0.5, zero delay, fill mode both, ease out, it can be play state running, normal direction, and normal count by default. And I can create another class for my scale up animation and apply whatever defaults I want for that animation. Then to set these on some elements, on this heading here, I can add my slide up class and it'll get those styles. On this hero text here, my paragraph, I can add slide up and it gets those styles as well. Now, if I make a change here, like maybe swapping out sort of the duration here to 0.8, that's only gonna affect instances of hero paragraph throughout my site. So these two paragraphs have 0.8, but the heading still has 0.5 coming from the main slide up class. So we're just making some overrides specific to this element. And we can do the same thing on these cards. I have the slide up class on each of them and I can change their ease to a default ease, change their duration. And now all those cards should just slide up. 
But if I want to change the animation I apply to these cards, I don't have to go back to each one of them. I can just rename the class to scale up and it'll get now the scale up animation name like so, but it'll still retain the overrides I put like the duration and the ease when switching the animation type and all these animate. Now to add any kind of staggering, we can create a variable called i set on the HTML element and set its default value to zero. Then we can create a data attribute name called data stagger list. Whenever that's applied on something, each of the direct children will get a different value for i. So the second item within that list will have an i equal to one. Third item within the list index will be equal to two. And we'll continue that for up to 50 items. Now to use this within our animation, I can select maybe my scale up here and set its delay instead of zero, I'll use a calc. And within that calc, I'll add in my index variable of i, and I'll multiply that by whatever number I'd like, maybe 0.2 seconds. So the first item, i is equal to zero, zero times 0.2, the first item will have a zero second delay. Second item, i is equal to one times 0.2, it'll have a 0.2 second delay. Third item, i is equal to two, times 0.2 will be a 0.4 second delay. So the delay will increase for each item within the list. I'm going to set the default delay to zero for now so that I can use this animation without a stagger. But if I want to add the stagger, maybe on this list that holds all these boxes, I can add a data attribute name of data stagger list so that each item within this gets a different value for i. Then on these items, I can apply my scale up or whatever animation I'd like. And then for the delay of them, instead of zero seconds, I'll do point uh, zero 0.05 delay between each item. So now if I preview, they each stagger in one after the other. And that's looking great. Now I might wanna do the same thing for this heading. So I can wrap each word within a span. I can give this a class like hero span. And if we're gonna be animating its move, we need to set it from inline to inline block. That way we can actually move it. And on this, I can go ahead and add a class like slide up to each of these here. And I can go ahead and set a value of how much I wanna delay them, maybe by 0.2. And on the whole parent here, I'll go ahead and add my data stagger list. So each sort of span within gets a different value for i. And now if we preview, each word is animating one after the other, whereas this regular uh, paragraph is using the same slide up class, but with no sort of staggering. It just has a hard coded delay there. And we might want that these boxes only start animating after the text finishes. So I could select the boxes and I could try and increase the delay here, but that's gonna increase the amount of time between each of them which isn't quite what we want. We wanna offset the start of all these boxes animating. So to do that, what we'll do is wrap this uh, multiplication like so, so that this multiplication happens first. Then outside of it, we'll add to this maybe like a delay of one second. So we're gonna make sure that each of these have an offset that's incremented by their index. But on top of that, we're gonna add a one second delay to the start of all of them. So if we go ahead and run this, we should notice the boxes wait now till all the text is finished. We can also create animations like loop spin that rotate to 360 degrees or loop move left that translate X by negative 100%. And we can create classes for these, like I've created a loop move left that basically plays infinite number of times. It has the default duration and everything. And then I've added that on top of these text elements and overrode the duration for these here. Now I could say whenever I hover this text to change its play state instead of running to be paused. The issue with that is it's only gonna pause the text I'm hovering over. So while this one pauses, the other one does not. To fix that, I can create a data attribute of data hover pause. Whenever that's applied, it'll find any children inside that element and set them to be running by default. Then when we hover over that element, it'll find the children and set them to be paused. We can do the opposite with a data hover play, set all the children to be paused by default. And when we hover that element, set it to be running on the children. So if we go ahead and test this on this whole parent, I might set a data hover pause and I might set that to true. And now whenever I hover this, it pauses all children within that parent. 
and I could do a data hover play if I want. And when I hover, it plays all children within. 